Hello everyone and welcome to what is arguably the most anticipated video ever on YouTube. And you might be wondering, why is this because of this incredible qualifying lap that we're seeing at the moment? And I will be honest, no. It definitely wasn't an incredible qualifying lap, but we're not gonna worry about that because that's not what is important. This is probably one of the most exciting videos I've ever had to make because it is one of the most exciting races I've ever been a part of. And we'll get into a little bit about why that is, as we usually do, because usually on these videos we cover the racing that has been recorded on the GoPros, and then I share it to you, and then I talk a bunch of nonsense. So we're going to get right into that nonsense, as we see right here, Seth puts in incredible qualifying lap. The reason I was a little bit so-so on my qualifying lap, I don't know, I just didn't really hit my marks exactly where I needed it to be, and you can tell I'm telling the truth because the qualifying lap was slower than somebody else. But as we get started, we're gonna get straight into it. Seth has the inside line right there and almost just immediately we end everything, but it's okay, we save ourselves. Seth is okay and we continue on. Get a little bit sideways through there, so I'm gonna cover that inside line. Sometimes people make a mess through there. I just wanna cover myself off from anybody making a move. And right now I know that I have Evan behind me. He's probably not gonna overtake me. I trust him and trust him I do and everything worked out just fine and if you notice right now how much time I gained through Seth through that section right there and it's actually pretty interesting we're on the same gear however if you were to look at his tires and if you could see my tires on the rear he's on a six inch rim I'm on a seven inch rim which means that when you mount the tires mine are just a little bit more stretched giving myself a little bit less radius which technically gives me it's almost as if you were running a taller sprocket right so i have just a bit more acceleration he has a bit more top speed so you're going to notice throughout the video um, i'm actually able to kind of catch him specifically through here where we're not hitting rev limit but as we get out and i get a better exit um, you're going to see that he will kind of start to pull away a little bit from me so very interesting dynamic that we had throughout the race and you know one of the really good things about being behind set as I as I normally have been throughout the season is I am learning the lines so I'm trying to you know understand I'm feeling good about where I'm at and actually Evan is doing a really good job at staying in touch with us even though we're kind of like pushing ourselves a little bit together um, but yeah it's really i know that he's not pulling away from me i you can kind of get a sense for when oh man i actually can't catch this person i'm only here because i'm in their draft however here i was understanding that you know what everything's going to be okay and actually i'm going to go in and send myself in there for a nice little move right there up on the inside and that actually brings evan back into play if you look at the rear view camera right there so Seth is going to tuck back in and he's actually just going to push me along and you can hear the revs of the engine just spiking up just a little bit um, but yeah everything is all good and it's super super crucial to get this part right I know that I have the advantage to this section what I really need to do is take this part of the track where I know I'm quicker to build just a bit of a gap on Seth so he, I don't leave myself vulnerable coming out into the back straight and as you can tell I've been doing just that for the last three laps as we get into I guess the ending phase of the race I'm gonna start going defensive you're gonna see me right here I'm not gonna let him make the move right there because if he gets past me he's gonna make it super super difficult and I'm also aware that Evan is just behind us so if I can kind of slow Seth down just a bit that will keep Evan in play and hopefully the battle will be for second versus first if you know what I'm trying to say you know it's it's kind of like using math to your advantage it's pretty interesting stuff now we kind of tuck in we're starting lap number 10 Seth is right behind me you can see again the revs spiking just because he has that bit more top end on us and we're gonna make sure that we nail this section through here as we have in the past usually and historically i notice i'm actually pretty quick through the infield i struggle on that final turn getting a really good exit um, we'll try to break down a little bit of the differences it's it's minute differences that really give you um, 
that advantage going through that final turn. And I'll go ahead and show you a little bit as we come up on it. But as you can see through here, the gap that I'm able to pull on him right here. But it's super easy for him to make up that time on the next part of the track because of that long straight. When I'm hitting Rev Elevator, he's still climbing just a bit more speed. And you can tell that he actually takes that turn really, really well. You can see how much time he's gained on me just through that section. It's one of the things that I kind of just need to figure out. Um, I know it's my weak point, but thankfully enough, it is not weak enough for me to lose a position through there. But just kind of have to be careful a little bit. Choose my lines a little bit strategically as I move across to what is the outside of the track into turn one and make sure that I can make myself as wide as possible. Now, go into this section one more time, once again, nailing it exactly where I need to nail it, tracking it all the way out, and you can see that I've built a pretty nice gap at the moment. I'm feeling pretty safe, making sure I check back, try to hit the apex exactly where I need it to be, but look how much time, once again, Seth is able to grab on me. Now, of course, he's in the slipstream, it's obviously gonna help him out, but as we start the final lap of the first race, of the final race of the season, I almost understeer off because, yeah, so by the way, one of the things that they did is they were like, yeah, these drop-offs, yeah, it's not good to have like a six inch drop-off um, if you go off. So they're like, okay, yeah, cool, we'll fix that. Let's put some gravel. But the gravel is like little cat litter rocks. And literally every single time someone goes off, the rocks get all over the place and it stresses me out because I think I'm going to crash when I'm leading the race. And ideally, you don't want that to happen. But thankfully, we're able to keep everything in line, under control, as we cross the finish line to secure the first win ever of Tri-C. But keeping it nice and cool, I'm trying to stay calm um, because it doesn't matter if you win the first race. Because the first race doesn't get you any trophies. And by the way, if you watch the race from Tri C Round 7, you'll notice that it's just a bit unrealistic now to think that I can win the championship at this point. Unless, you know, Seth spins out, blows his engine, whatever. We're going to find out if any of that actually happens. But, you know, ideally not. But, I mean, you know, I'm not going to complain. Now, I want you to look super, super closely at this at this line right here. Look at the tram lines. Look at where the green flag goes. And you're going to notice that I started climbing over into the tram lines. And it was pretty borderline. We're going to take a look at Evan's perspective, Ivan's perspective right here. You'll find out why I actually needed to get this footage. It's super, super close. But it was close enough to cause, as you might say, a little bit of a conspiracy now as i said we'll talk about that a little bit later the good thing for us is evan is behind me and we actually have mr rodney in third place i believe i believe that is the best he's done at the moment but um yes yeah, seth comes through yeah as per usual so sorry rodney whatever um now that is not ideal for us but the good thing is we have our buddy evan right here he's going to push us along we are going to work together to get far, 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 far away from the enemy. Now, coming in through here, I make sure to get an air filter and kick it out of the way. And we fast forward into the end of lap two. And Seth goes through somebody else. So, it's really just uh, up to me to hold the fort. Now, at the moment, you know, climbing lap four. Unfortunately, the race doesn't end at lap four, so we have much more work to do and much more focus to maintain. And one of the things that as I was talking about, you know, the little freaking cat litter that they throw on the track and stuff. Yeah, so turns out Glass doesn't like the cat litter. And uh, yeah, so you're going to have to just deal with this because, you know, unfortunately, I had to deal with it. And one of the things I also had to deal with was being in second place, getting demoted down to the first loser of the race but it's okay i know i have the pace i just need to stay patient and i need to work with seth a little bit right here so ideally one of the things you'll see in karting a lot and you know this is i want you guys to take this and understand the wisdom here right so 
as you can tell, it's lap seven. It's been really tough, obviously, for Evan to maintain, I guess, in contact with us if we're both working together and just slowly pushing ourselves away. Now, you'll notice that kind of tends to happen in a lot of carding, a lot of stuff like that where people will kind of bump draft each other because ideally, what do you want to do? Do you want to fight for first and second or do you want to fight for first, second, and third? I would rather fight for just first and second, you know, I, but that's just me, you know, and I'm, and I'm super intelligent and yeah, I mean, what, what can I say? Whatever. So halfway through the race, still, you know, tucked behind Seth. Right now, one of the biggest things I'm trying to understand is I make a move on Seth right there. And um, let's see if I can hold the line. I take an unorthodox line through there, basically using the grass, but it works exactly as we need it to work. Now, as I was saying, one of the things that I was trying to notice is Seth tries to make a cutback on me. I'm gonna try to pinch him as much as I possibly can. I'm gonna get the cutback on him through here, see if I can accelerate through there. Now you're gonna see the issue that I talked about in the heat race as we give ourselves thumbs up for being such good drivers. Now, would that thumbs up still apply if we were fighting for the championship? I don't really think so, whatever. Um, I'm gonna have a slight little look. You know, the track's a little bit dirty right there but I'm gonna just tuck back in, try to be patient. And yeah, so as you can tell, I know at that point, if Seth takes me on the final lap, on the final turn, I'm not gonna get past him because by the time we cross the finish line, I'm getting close to hitting rev limiter and he is not. So one of the parts of the track where I was really curious to see where I can make the move and you saw me make the move on the previous race was going into that final turn. Now. One of the most scary things in the world as our PTSD, yes, PTSD, that's the abbreviation, is for a back marker. So I am, the blood pressure is spiking through the ceiling. I am so stressed out that this back marker is gonna ruin things. As we've seen in the past, not specifically this back marker, but you know, things happen and people just, I guess, forget that they're not trying to win the race, you know, but whatever. Everything worked out exactly as it needed to be. You know, we are back into our calm and regularly scheduled second place program right here. And as I was saying through this section, I need to really balance it out. I was actually having a bit of a lift just so I wouldn't run into the back of Seth through here. And the reason, it's not necessarily that I didn't want to give him more of a push, but let's see what we do here. Can we make this move with the back marker and with Seth on the left? Oh my God. Probably one of the most incredible overtakes I've ever made in my life. But as I was saying, through that section, as it probably doesn't apply anymore because I am leading the race, as you can tell, um, I needed to kind of understand how much of a gap do I need to give myself before that double right-hander, before I catch Seth before exiting the turn. And the reason I say that is because if I give him a bump before I exit the turn, I lose my momentum and I give him the momentum as I go defensive through here. And what's gonna happen is I'm not gonna be able to make them overtake into that final turn. So I need to be, I don't know, I was trying to plan it out. And even though I'm ahead right now, it's really, really good to just kind of keep that in mind and understand how much of a gap do I need to give myself to make sure that I can make the pass ahead and not give them the advantage coming out of the exit. So one of those things that you need to do, another thing that you need to do is make sure that you cover the inside line and not give them the advantage, which is clearly a lapse in judgment that I've just had. And ideally, you don't want to have that lapse in judgment as I try to send it in on the inside, try to gain it back immediately. However, I should have thought maybe I should wait for the hairpin, but obviously he would have gone in defensive onto the hairpin. And I thought I had a bit of an opportunity through there, but you, we're gonna see how much time I'm actually able to gain on him through here. So going into lap 16, we have just a few more laps to go. And right here is where you, this is exactly what I was talking about. You saw that I was catching him up with a ton of momentum, but I had to kind of let off to not give him that bump. However, it was just exactly at that wrong place where if I wanted to make a move, it just wasn't gonna happen. Another thing that's not gonna happen is getting into first place right here. He's gonna have me covered. He has the top, the top end on me and it's just not gonna work out. So just a little bit more patience, a little bit more calm headedness is required if we wanna win this race. So as you can tell, more gravel on the, gra on the track 
as per usual, I guess. He goes onto a defensive line. He's going to start defending. He knows there's that not that many laps left. We're going to see what we can do through here. Bumping him through the section there. And we're going to see if we can get a nice little run out of here. But it's just not going to happen. Let's see if we can make a move. I'm tucking into the slipstream. Let's see if I can send it late into the brakes. And we are able to capitalize once again. And now... As I am a smart little boy, I learn not to give him the inside line for the next turn. As you can tell, you know, super intelligent by my part right here. Now, we're going to go through this section one more time. As you can see, tons of gravel on the left. Perfect for running off the track if, you, if you'd like, you know. Um, but everything is under the control at the moment. Um, at this point, I know, and I've looked back, there's no threat of anyone else catching us. We have been working together for the most part of the lap, and at this point, it's really, do I want to win the race, or do I want to come second? So it's one of those debates that you have when you're leading the race, and you want to wonder, man, you know, it'd be cool if I can win the race. So that's what I was trying to do at the moment. And with two laps left, I have built just a pretty decent gap actually. I had done a pretty good job through that infield and I was able to kind of pull away a little bit from him. So we're gonna see what we can do through here. We know that if we go defensive through here, we won't leave ourselves vulnerable. So we're gonna go defensive. Actually, we don't need to go defensive because we have just the right amount of breathing room. So now the one thing I need to do here is get an incredible drive through here get the exact exit that I need to be but Seth actually gets a really good exit through there and this is really going to benefit him because coming in to that final turn he's going to make a move on me I did not expect this I really blew it through there so we're going to tuck in but as you've seen many many times before he's going to be able to hold his line he's going to have more top speed on me and what I really should have done I should have backed off a little bit through there because I kind of had to narrow my line and just it wasn't optimal and you can see the amount of time that he's gained on me this is the final lap of the final race of the final season and it it's just not going to work out right now but a miracle a miracle happens because Seth forgets to check back he forgets to check back and he gets a terrible exit through there as well I am right on top of him I give him a bump he doesn't take that curb right and I'm able to take so much momentum through there that I'm actually able to get on those marbles through there or whatever I don't know they are I check back I have a look it gives me the thumbs up because I don't know and we cover it off we take a look look back and have ourselves a little bit of a celebration through there very incredible now as you can tell I was very happy yeah I was actually super excited that was the first win actually second win uh first main win as you see everyone's like oh my god High five, man. That's so cool that you won a race, man. So cool. Now, you might have noticed that I was talking a little bit about a... Um, the reason Ivan had that video and I took it from him and I used it for this, I also used it to show it to the stewards because I was given a penalty for moving off the tram line before the flag was waved. Now, you might be wondering, does that mean I lost? No, obviously not, because I took the video and I showed it to them, and they were like, oh yeah, my bad, bro. And they reinstated me the position of winning, as you could tell right there. So at the end of the day, it was a really good day. And um, if now that you're watching this, you're like, oh my God, this guy's so good, he's won a race then I invite you to sponsor me with all your money because I can make more of these videos and maybe win sometimes. I can't promise that, but um, I can promise that I will use your money to buy tires and race fuel. Thank you.